Okay, we're we're here with uh, Roman El Gallito Salazar. Did I say that correctly? Hey, you did right off the button. Not bad yeah, for a man. white boy, huh? That's it, man. People say it wrong. Next time, call me Bill Cox. That works. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, uh, I was raised by a, a Hispanic woman, so I think I got that accent down pretty good. Hey, she did. She thought you well. Yeah, she did. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. So, usually how we get this thing going is I dominate and I don't want to do that. So, I'm going to let the co-host go ahead and uh, start with his question first. But we're here with uh, Roman Salazar. He fights at LFA 72. Uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, over at the Comerica Theater, and he is fighting. What's the new guy's name? Mario Israel. Yeah, Mario Israel. Uh, so this is LFA 72. We're on the main card. Um, Crazy J, Jonathan, what do you got for Roman? Well, first off, I just want to say thank you for taking time uh, out of your very, very busy schedule uh, to get with us and talk with us this evening. Absolutely, man. My pleasure, actually. It's, uh, it's helping me burn time. You know, whenever it's cut week, all we do is stare at the clock, so it's actually really helps. <laughs> yeah, kind of helping pass the time by, huh? You got it. <laughs> all right, well, uh, I just got a, a couple questions here for you. Um, my first question is, um, how cool is it getting to fight on the same car as, as your teammate? Um, are there going to be any bragging rights involved? Yeah, man, it's pretty awesome, honestly. Like, uh... We got four on the, on the card right now, man. It's going to be pretty cool. Obviously, we got Rafael Montini, who's been the fight in the co-main event. We got Paris Superhero Stanford. Not sure where he falls on the card. And then we have uh, Ray as well. So, I mean, there's going to be four of us representing Fight Ready that night. So, it's pretty dope, man. It's, uh, you know, a higher-profile card to LFA, too. Not just your normal local show. So, I think it's going to be uh, a lot of eyes on the card and a lot of people to see where, what kind of potential and what kind of fighters are putting out of Fight Ready. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I hear you on that. And there's a lot of great fighters coming out of there. Um, uh, are there going to be any bragging rights, or do you guys, or is it just like, hey, you did good. Here's what you can work on, or is it going to be like, ah, I won, you lost. Like, suck it. Like, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, no, for the most part, yeah, we're definitely uh, got a very tight family feel here at Fight Ready, so definitely be none of that. I get kind of weird whenever it comes to uh, fight night. If I have to share a card with my friends, I don't watch anything until after I fight because I, I, get, I also corner a lot of these guys and stuff, so I get way too anxious and my anxiety gets through the roof. I know a lot of dudes go out and watch and do that. I just kind of lock myself away in my locker room, throw my headphones on, and we'll, we'll uh, see whatever happens, happens, and we'll either drink some happy beers or some sad beers after, I guess. <laughs> Well, either way, beer's going to be involved, and that's always uh, a good thing, I guess, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. You, you can count it. me in. Count me in. <laughs> um, my second question for you is, uh, are you a fight fan? Oh, yeah, man. I love fighting. I have uh, always have. I mean, I grew up loving the sport of boxing. I think uh, Oscar de la Hoya and Cesar Cabrera were always like idols to me. My mom just always thought it was crazy that I wanted to box and wouldn't let me do it. The second I turned 18, I went and found... Uh, Boxing Inc. down in Tucson. That's where I kind of started my career after wrestling uh, all throughout junior high and high school. And uh, found out really quick that this is what I wanted to do. So I decided to, you know, just kind of push it this and uh, make this my life. Gotcha. Now, um, I heard you mention um, Oscar De La Hoya. Um, is he your favorite fighter to watch, or do you have a particular fighter that you love watching? Uh, nowadays, I mean, I still enjoy the sport of boxing so much. I love watching Canelo. I, I mean, it's just like, it's just sweet science going on in the boxing ring, you know. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to watch. It's almost like poetry and motion where what we do is a little bit more brutal. Um, definitely got a lot more ways to lose. Got a lot more ways to finish people. But, yeah, man, at this point now, I mean, obviously... It, being tied to MMA, I think Frankie Edwards has always been my uh, favorite MMA fighter and kind of how I used to try to mimic my style, but now with so much going on and uh, stuff in my career, I, I, I think I'm my own favorite fighter now. That's just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and my third and final question I got for you 
um, is what do you like to do in your spare time when you're not training for fights or uh, just like joking out or anything? Ah, man, I'm a family man. I uh, am married. I've uh, been with my wife. We were in high school. <laughs> we have a 12 year old son, and we have a nine year old daughter, man. So I just like to hang out with the kids. My French bulldog, and just really, man, just hang out. All oh, like whatever it is, we're all nerds, kind of Marvel nerds. Go watch Marvel movies. We uh, video game a lot. Me and my son, he skateboards. And I'm kind of showing him how as well. So just really hanging out at this point. But yeah, this pretty much consumes my life for the most part. But I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> oh, nice. I, I like hearing when uh, when fighters are, you know, they they spend a lot of time with their family because I mean. Uh, it, it's got to be crazy trying to balance, you know, both the fight world and the family world with everything going on. Oh, one hundred percent, man. I consider myself pretty spoiled because not only do I train out of fire radio, but I'm actually the general manager, so my kids get to be here every day alongside of work with me. You know, a lot of people that have those tough training schedules and stuff don't get to see their kids a lot. They actually get to like bring your kid to work every day with me, so it's pretty solid. And that's what's up. Oh, um, yeah, that's super cool. Well, uh, again, thank you for taking time out and uh, talking with us. That's all I've got for you. Uh, I'll send you back over to the host. It's in your awesome, Sounds good. All right. So the street is, uh, sorry, my dogs are over here. Uh, word on the street is you train with uh, Triple C, the King of Cringe. Hey, I sure do. I've been training with the King of Cringe for six years now. <laughs> Okay, now I know it's it's mostly a stick. Uh, Henry's actually a pretty a pretty down to earth guy. So does training with with Henry like build confidence? Is it a confidence booster knowing that you train with arguably one of the best to ever do it? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, anytime you get the round with him, I mean, you know, you're looking the devil in the face, man. It doesn't get much better than that. And uh, I mean, we just got a lot of those in this room right now. Just, I mean. Literally, I mean, obviously, we got Henry. I mean, just looking eye to eye with Korean Zombie and all his flying rounds, his last camp here and his camp here. We got Duke over at Belfo, Henry Corrales, and other UFC fighters at Carpaos, uh, Bobby Moffitt, plenty of times. Everybody I get a train with, I'm like, honestly, more scared to come to practice than I ever have been in Washington. <laughs> at the end of the day, man, I'm going to have another set lined up against me, even if I, I mean, there's no finishes here with you choke somebody out, they just get pissed at you, and then come at you harder, you know, so it's uh, it's one of those things, but yeah, having uh, Henry under this roof, and then everything he's done as far as, like, getting Neuroforce involved, and the true science of fighting, in, you know, it's made this camp superior to any other I've ever had, using the tools that, you know, they use for him, are now part of this team, it's, it's pretty awesome. Okay, now, and it's, it's also fight week, okay? We got the weigh-ins on Thursday, and then uh, you know we get to have fun on Friday. So, what what type of things do you do on fight week to prepare yourself for you know getting in the ring? Yeah, so I came in, got my uh, I got one practice a day today, tomorrow. Um, I did a thirty-minute mid session, thirty-minute blow grappling session with Frank Stein today. Nice. And uh, then then I went and got a massage, and now I'm sitting here at the gym seeing what it looks like here. Like I said, I run the thing. I could probably go home, but I'm kind of a workaholic, so I want to make sure everything's looking good. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, the rest of the week's uh, a little bit of tapering, uh, a lot of drinking water. Like today, I'm drinking three gallons. It's the weirdest thing ever. Whenever you weigh in, the only thing you want in the world is water. Whenever you're water loading, the only thing you hate in the world is water. So it's like the <laughs> polar opposite of what's going on. It's like, just finished my second one. And I'm like looking at the clock on. Man, I got one more to go right now. So uh, you got uh, this, man. You got this. Absolutely, man. Um, and yeah, just like really, what I do uh, is I visualize a lot. I definitely I visualize. I listen to a lot of audible, read a lot of books. Just try to put myself in the zone to understand that you know there's only things I can focus on are things I can control, as mm -hmm. opposed to things that aren't in my control. So I just uh really, really work on my mind this week. I think uh, all camp, we spend so much time working on the physical that we forget about the mental, and since I can't really work out so much, I just spend like 90% of the day just working on mental visualization or just positive thoughts or affirmation, just picturing everything that could happen in the fight and just making sure that it always ends with my hand raised, man. 
Okay, and uh, are there any like ritualistic type things that you do, like something you have to do during fight week? Yeah, if I fight up here in Phoenix, I'm weird, man, and and it's uh, my rituals are funny. Like if I uh, if I breakfast spot has to be the same, <laughs> the dinner <laughs> after has to be the same. If I if I win, and then if I happen to lose a fight, I won't go eat there again, man. I was like, <laughs> nope, that's the day that I like just changed it right here, man. <laughs> Eating at this sushi restaurant, dude, I got stopped blown on that decision. That's what did it. So I'm kind of weird whenever it comes to that, but. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just really a cool time to get everybody together, all my friends. I do, like, do a big dinner after weigh-ins with a bunch of my teammates and stuff. And just kind of, like, shoot before I go to war, you know, so it's always pretty cool to do. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely it. That's definitely a given. And then always after a fight, I just always go down to the mammoth I don't know where I'm from and go visit my family in my hometown, regardless of where I'm fighting. I, like, go that, that same weekend, just, you know, go see the roots and see where I came from. And it's kind of humbling to see where I've made it in this sport whenever I see where my humble beginnings were. Yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty small town. Do you want to give our uh, listeners uh, kind of an idea of uh, what, what we're talking about here? Yeah, absolutely, man. Mammoth, Arizona is just a mining community. As a matter of fact, they call it a tri-community because they have to put three small towns together to build one high school. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, literally, man, it's crazy. Like, I mean, and at this point, the mine closed, so I mean, it's like three ghost towns down right now. Like, it's like from what I hear, the graduating classes have like 40 kids in them now. It's just crazy, man. It's just small. And, you know, I just always remember like uh, playing sports and like not settling. Uh, like everybody ends up working the mine. You're an 18 year old kid and they're like, hey, I'm going to pay you $26 an hour and keep you stuck cold, you know. So all the dudes don't go anywhere. And uh, I told my top one to be another statistic, man, I was going to do something, I was going to chase the dream, and here I am chasing dreams every day still, man. Okay, then let's talk about your gym, okay? You said you're the general manager there. Now, how, does that get complicated, running a gym while in a training camp and all the crazy shit that you guys got going on, especially during fight week? You know, I actually, I, mean, I do got a good team, uh, front desk staff, and uh, like, luckily all my coaches are all on the fight team for the most part, too, so, I mean, I got their back when they're fighting, they got mine, it does get a little hectic sometimes, especially like, things like today, I have to push my training back, because I have to get all the payroll done, and things like that, you know, and then the coaches are like, hey man, I can't make it till X amount of time, so I gotta pay you, so they're not gonna tell me no, you know, but yeah, it, it gets a little hectic at time, a little stressful, but nothing I, I can't control. As long as you manage your time right and you make sure that, you know, your time is used usefully, you're always going to be okay, at least at least that's the way I see it. I know a lot of people get lazy on co week and don't want to do things, but I'm not that way. I like the day to go by fast, so I like to stay busy that way before I know it'll be Thursday and I'll be hitting the scale. Let's see, and that's what uh, fighters... Uh tend to look forward to is like the training camp is 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 considered the work and then once all that's put in you get to go have fun like the fight they don't really consider that work you know so they just go in there and they're able to let loose a little bit absolutely man i mean that's payday right there i mean everything <laughs> you work for like like i said you go there and you're just working all these hours for one thing and it's finally upon you i mean dude, what's better than that I mean, it's just aggression and that and this sweet poetry man just making it happen and go do what you do what better way to express yourself everything you work on on a platform where people are sitting there watching you <laughs> it's nothing nothing cooler i, I don't think anyway it's the now, truest form of competition for sure is there a way that you could explain to the listeners like what getting a a win feels like yeah man i mean honestly i mean there's the highest highs and the lowest lows. This sport's so crazy. Like whenever you win, I mean, I the, the it's the highest high ever. Like everything you went through, the injuries you walk into, what you were going through in that fight, it's just all gone. You're on top of the world, and it's like this own form of heroin, man. Like you wish you could feel that feeling every day. Like that that win right there. That's I think why a lot of fighters have trouble walking away, man. Like whenever they should probably retire because. That feeling is so lucrative, man. You feel that, and it's just the highest. Like, you're ready to fight next week, right after. You're like, ah. Oh. And then whenever you lose, man, it's the complete opposite. You feel like you just put eight weeks of your life into something 
everything, all of you into something, and then to, to lose a fight, man, it's just like so detrimental to your spirit and stuff. So I think um, for me anyway, me being as emotional as I am, I definitely stopped focusing so much on outcome and started focusing a lot more on performance, man, and just enjoying every minute of it because one of these days there's going to be some cool stories I get to tell my kids and get to tell my grandkids, man. Well, yeah, and it's it's a, it's also a young man's sport, you know, and you've been doing it for quite a while, so. Absolutely, man, you got it. So, yeah, now being 31 years old, man, it's pretty cool to see the new flock of kids come in that have been training since they're 12, and they're monsters, man. You're like, Dude, you're only 20 years old, you can do all this. I was like, you how to wrestle when I was 20, so it's pretty cool to see, man. So, yeah, I'm definitely in a good spot to, to get to see uh, the, the, the new uh, killers come on through. Yeah, the new triple C's, huh? <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> All right, now your your original opponent fell out uh, due to an un- indisclosed injury, uh, but LFA was able to find you uh, a late replacement. Are you pretty happy that your training camp did not go to waste here? Yeah, one hundred percent, man. And mostly, I mean, I was telling you, I was in Philadelphia cornering a fighter whenever uh, one of our fighters, Derek Flores, whenever they. Uh, called me and told me that this fight wasn't happening and I was like, man, I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to think you need one of these cheesesteaks, but no, we're going to find somebody. So I was like, man, I'm just going to stick to it. I was up to Philly. Didn't cheat my diet once. I was like, all right, man, this is this for the cheesesteak. Now you guys better find me somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they were uh, they were able to pull Mario Israel together. Pretty cool. And, uh, I mean, it's not at 35 like it would have been. It's going to be at a catch because he took it a little bit uh, short notice. Damn, so we could have had the cheesesteak. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. I was like, cheesesteak could have worked now. I was only no. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited, man, just to be able to fight in my backyard here. And, uh, um, just do what I do, man. I mean, uh, Mario Israel, I've watched some of his fights, uh, his older fights. Definitely watched his fight in ACB. He's a huge tough. Yeah, I know he's got good striking, and I, I, I love the challenge of it, man. I love testing myself and seeing what I can do out there. So, I mean, obviously, I'm going to be pushing for finishes and just try to put this dude away. I can't wait. Yeah, and what does he bring to the table that we need to keep an eye on? Um, he's got power in both hands, and he's got fast kicks, man. I've seen some of his Muay Thai stuff. I mean, and then he's just a really scrambly guy as well. So, I think uh, our fighting styles kind of make for a hell of a matchup, to be honest. I mean, because... I, I got a very crowd pleasing style. I'm always trying to fight to finish at all times and always doing uh, anything I can to keep things on my feet and saying some cheap gospel, man. That's just the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I'm a, I'm a wrestler at heart, but, but I love to slank them out. I don't know why. I've just always been that way. Once somebody hits me, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go one for one. Let's make it happen. So, I mean, I guess it's just that Mexican in me. It doesn't let me let me live it down. But, uh, yeah, he's just a tough striker, man. He's good. good. And uh, looks like a complete fighter. Um, I didn't get to find find too much on him, but my coaching staff uh, put together a pretty quick game plan for him, and I think uh, they did a good job with it. So it's just about taking him in the deep waters and proving I'm the better man that man. Okay. Uh, now looking back in your career, you fought on the biggest stage, and you fought some legit badasses. I'm talking Marlon Vera. He just got a win not too long ago in the UFC. Kid Yamamoto, rest in peace, a, a legend of the sport. What do you think it's going to take to get you back to the big show? Um, I don't know, man. It all starts with uh, Mario Israel, to be honest. I just, it's, it's the funniest thing, man. Like, I think I got so tired of hearing everybody say, like, if people seen what you did in the gym um, out there, uh, that you haven't even reached the surface of what you're doing because my performance anxiety was so bad. Like I told you, I was a super emotional fighter before. I went and hired a sports psychologist. That was my next question. out of my brain, man, and like literally, like my last fight was finally the first fight I had, and I was in March, so I felt free, man. I was like, finally, I feel like I'm doing me. And it's a scary thought, man. Like, if I could be me in the, me in the gym out, out there in the world, man, like, People haven't even seen the surface yet, so I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to just go out there and do it. And like I said, at this point, I don't fight because I need to fight anymore. I'm in a good spot. I got a cool career. I got good things going here, but I just love the sport so much, man. I just like, like to give back and just push myself and test myself every day, man. So if I don't make it, that's cool. If I do make it back, you know, I'll be making a run. It's all good. Yeah, you know, I was 
kind of uh, just sitting there listening to you talk, you sound like calm, cool, and collected, and you're about to get in a fucking fist fight. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it, man. I get in fucking fist fights every day. So to <laughs> me, I'm like, dude, it's just it's Monday, right? Like, yeah, I, I'm telling, I'm telling you, man. And I and I think that just comes with experience, right? Like before, I used to get like the craziest like anxiety and thoughts and just feeling like. And now at this point, man, I'm like, dude, it's it's what we do every day. It's for I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna eat breakfast, I'm gonna eat clean, I'm gonna go fight, I'm gonna come home, my family's still gonna love me. Everything's gonna be good, and man, I'm gonna come back on Monday because I'm the king of overtraining. And my coach is gonna yell at me and tell me to take the day off. <laughs> and that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> like, hey, that, that's how it goes, man. That's like that's my life in a nutshell for the most part. <laughs> okay, and it, it's it, it looks like you're starting to you know get your your fighting career on track. You're finding a groove. It seems like maybe. You know, getting to the big stage, it, it came a little bit early. You know, you needed some more experience under your belt. Now, has there been any, like, hardships along the way, um, you know, aside from, like, injuries and stuff? Or have things been, you know, pretty easy sailing? Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, I think uh, my career took, like, a pretty big tumble. Some of the stuff I didn't want to, like, really face myself whenever my, my, my dad was murdered. And, yeah, whenever that happened, I think, like, I realized that my dad was a big uh, why and a big inspiration as to uh, why I was even a fighter and it was just kind of like pushing it like I think I was always looking for his approval um, and then whenever he was gone my brain I kind of lost my why right so I'm like sitting around and taking fights and wondering what's going on just not feeling the same type of motivation but you know I faced those demons faced what happened realized that you know life goes on and I got my own family to make happy and uh and just been a better man for it now. I really have like and at this point now, like I, I like I said, man, I used to just, like think that things like this were my fault. Like whenever it happened, he was supposed to be on a trip to California with us. He decided to stay, and then I like literally talked to him on the phone the day, you know, the day I was driving back, and just never got to see my dad again. I put a lot of that blame on myself just because I tend to do that, and I think, uh, yeah, it kind of took a, a detail on me. Um, definitely in my fight career for sure man I became kind of negative kind of would fight to not you know just to feel some things I was numb for a while and now I just found the love for the sport again and realized what I could actually do if I'm going to do it right so I'm ready to make it happen there well our our deepest uh, condolences there um, you know that's never an easy thing to do or to go go through Sorry, my dogs are jumping all over me over here. It's not an easy thing to go through and, you know, to get through it and, you know, and just become the type of person that you are, you know what I mean? The type of fighter that you are, the type of father that you are, the type of businessman that you are. That's pretty, that's pretty fucking encouraging, uh, you know, to anybody who is looking to, uh, you know, better themselves or anybody who's going through some hardships. So um, I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. No, absolutely, man. Yeah, at the end of the day, man, I, that dude would always be pushing for me to be happy, and I get it, man. Like, absolutely. I just felt, you know, I just felt like, I mean, I was super young still. I was only 27 years old. It never happened. He was super young still, and I'm like, just sometimes shit don't feel fair, but it's okay, man. Like, life's not going to be fair sometimes, so I just got to go make the most of what I've got now and just try to make all these memories good, man, and just understand that he would have been proud of me either way. Yeah, that's a that's a great outlook to have, and you know somewhere he's he's looking down, smiling at you, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, I appreciate that. Okay, so on, on a lighter note, I actually have a little bit of comedy that I would, I would like to to share with you specifically. Um, you know, and looking at your record, I seen that uh, you fought Anthony Burchak, who's also fighting on the card. You fought, you know, Ed West, who's another, you know, uh, a big name here in Arizona. But you also fought a guy named Joe Madrid. You remember I Joe? I, 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 yep, I remember Joe. <laughs> okay, well, so do I, because back in the day when me and Joe were amateurs, he choked me out in 22 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a common opponent, which is not something that I'm used to seeing when I'm doing my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won. I lost. I lost pretty fucking fast too. Yeah, Joe's tough, man. I uh, he's a very I tough like dude. Joe. He's 
still cutting hair down in Tucson, dude. Just oh, hell yeah. That dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, good man, good father, all that shit. So I, I'm, not, I'm not upset I lost to him, but, you know, if I could take solace in the fact that the man I'm talking to right now uh, got one back for me, I'm okay with that. Hey, there you go, man. That works out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I got uh, one more for you. Sure. Gaito, where does it come from? How did you get the name? Oh, man, Gaito's been my nickname since I was seven years old, man. I was uh, just happened to be the youngest nephew. My mom is one of eight, so there's a bunch of cousins running around everywhere. Obviously, they're Mexican. We think we got to have kids, a bunch of them. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it was just, honestly, man, my heels would call me Eshun Pichi Gaito because I would sit there trying to fight my older brother and my cousins with tears in my eyes and they'd be trying to make me stop and I'd still be trying to fight to the death, kind of was how they would say, obviously I was going to fight the guy, but they'd be like, man, this kid will fight to the death, he's a gaito. <laughs> my, my brother, my brother's name happened to be a Ramon and mine's a Roman, so I was really all fucked up, they just changed the uh, vowels around. <laughs> so, instead of remembering which one I was, they gave me a nickname, right? <laughs> oh man! So, so, so the guy, the the guy, the kind of came at seven years old, just kind of stuck like forever. <laughs> so that's the thing. So it worked out. All right, and then tell our listeners uh, what they should be listening for during uh, your fight. Oh, uh, you already know, man. You're gonna hear them cockle doodle dudes go real hard every time I fight all time, or you're gonna hear my that with the combination of my mad ass wife telling me to pick my hand up or, <laughs> or, or get up my wife is nuts and so she's all about it it's been a couple of times I'm not kidding I was fighting at Staples Center and I could hear her over anybody I was like man this is crazy this woman's so right or die but yeah definitely get ready to hear that that's a thing whenever I fight <laughs> Okay, now real quick, uh, since since you brought up the wife, how how okay is she with with the career choice? You know what, man? I don't think I'd be able to do this without the support system. Believe it or not, man, she's like not only does she train out of my gym, never thought of fighting or anything like that, but she comes in here staying tip top shape and doing that, and she literally do like everything from meal prepping to sits there. Through every single weight cut, she just like wants to monitor, and make sure everything's all right. Like a lot of wives wouldn't do that, man. Like I've been in Epsom salt baths or saunas where she sits in there with me, and she just wants to, she wants to to be that helping hand no matter what's going on, man. So that support system is great. You know, my kids have never been sheltered from this either. They know what their dad does, and they go and like literally. Every, uh, it feels like every year at school until my son's in middle school now I have to go explain to teachers that I didn't really just beat up people like I was an actual professional fighter <laughs> my daughter kind of went down and their dad beat everyone up so <laughs> I, it was like one of those but uh, yeah I uh, it's been cool man my support system has been great my wife's always been about it you know she says if I ever wanted to call it a she support me in whatever I do and I truly believe that and uh you know, it's always cool to have her in my corner, man. So I love her so much. It's it's, it's been awesome, man. I'm like for sure, ride or die, Bonnie, a quiet situation there. Well, hopefully she gives this thing a fucking listen, man. You'll be getting some uh, some brownie points here, buddy. That's it. I will say, <laughs> she always says she always says I don't talk about her enough, but hey, well there you go, me. there you go, <laughs> Miss Miss Gaito, You got your 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 15 seconds here. That's it. She got a minute. <laughs> <laughs> See, I said 15 seconds. He said a minute. See, that's that's a that's the husband right there. All right. Now, my last question for you before we let you go, and then of course I'll give you a chance to you know do your shout outs and you know whoever you want to give your time to. But uh, with uh, Mario Israel, how do you get it done, and in what round? Um. The round doesn't really matter. It's just about me breaking the dude, honestly. I think I'm going to be able to push him. I've noticed that he is hard to finish in the first. He does get tired. That's one thing I don't do. I don't get tired. I just keep chopping, man. I'm like a butt off. So I'm going to get this guy out of there, whether it be by emphatic knockout or he hangs that neck out there because he wants out of that cage. That fool's getting finished, though. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that fool's getting finished. I think I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to use that. <laughs> All right, well, dude, it's been fucking awesome. I've had a really great time. Jonathan, you've been having fun over there. Dude, I'm having a fucking blast over here. That's right. <laughs> well, we get to hear some cockle doodle doos on Friday. 
we get to you know go watch you guys weigh in on Thursday. That's right. We've been invited, and we're gonna take uh, LFA up on that. Great promotion. Awesome, man. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun doing all the interviews. Um, I'm just glad that we could get this one together last minute. I know it's fight week, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to do this again. Win or lose, uh, you're fucking a riot. So I can't I can't imagine going my entire life without doing this again. Awesome, brother. Sounds good. Make sure you stop by and say hi at the Wayans, and, and I'll have that fucking sucked out face with my guys went through Nazi camp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for sure, man. So go ahead. I'll give you as much time as you would like. Training partners, sponsors, whoever you would like to give a shout out. The floor is yours, my man. Go ahead. Well, honestly, just like always, man, I want to thank Fight Ready for you making this uh, possibility for me, uh, bringing the team together. All my training partners, like I said, they're my family. No one specifically. I mean, I have too many, too many heads here to name. Um, I think my biggest supporter uh, actually started from Tucson Western Concrete. This guy's been right at that with me my whole career here, John Maddie. So he's, he's solid. My dentist keeps my teeth with me all fitted down in the gamut with all these mouthpieces. Nice. And in reality, um, everyone I've worked with, man, I got a couple CBD companies that I'm working with. I got sponsors. Lord, but more, most of, like, more than anything, just thank my wife for still dealing with me and this crazy, tragic stuff I do whenever I'm not on any exact like that stuff, whenever I'm at home crying, because I'm lucky. That's about it. <laughs> but thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll do this again, my man. Okay. Right, sounds good, man. See you guys on Thursday. That's Roman Gallito Salazar. He fights LFA 72. At the Comerica Theater, July 26th. So that's this Friday, man. We'll see you soon, okay? All right, see you later. All right, man. Take it easy.